This uh, conference will now be recorded. I have an incredible uh, uh, presentation today on Voyage of the Vikings. I've been through it twice. I love it. I think you're going to enjoy the vacation and be amazed by what's available on this trip. So um, let me tell you a little bit about Travel Central, and then we'll get started right away. So um, So this is Travel Central. We've been in business for um, over 34 years now. Our only goal, we have a team of truly qualified advisors whose goal is to plan your vacation from the moment you call us to the time you return home to make sure you have a seamless vacation. You have an advocate in your court. Probably one of the biggest things we do now is advocate when challenges arise, schedule changes, flight changes, all those kind of things. That's what we're here for. We also though, have enhanced experiences and offer increased amenities for your vacation. And bottom line, we have experience. We do this all day long. We sell travel. We have the we have worked with vetted and insured suppliers. So we truly believe that um, we make travel seamless and easy. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Kristen. Kristen's with Holland America Line. We've been working with them for many, many years, and everyone who ever travels with them always comes back with a smile on their vac face and some great vacation memories. Kristen's been with them for many years and actually worked on ships, so has been to most of the places she'll be talking about it today. So Kristen, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you so much. I look forward to hearing the presentation. Thank you, Melinda. Yes, thank you all so much for having me today. And thank you for that wonderful introduction. Uh, yes, my name is Kristen Viotto. Um, I work with Holland America. I'm based out of Austin, Texas, but I did sail the seven seas with Holland America for uh, 13 years. So I've been to most of the ports of call in the world and have even done this upcoming cruise uh, once before, was very, um, had the opportunity to do it, was very, very fortunate. So I am very much looking forward to showing showcasing to you why these longer voyages, and especially this particular voyage, is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So the Voyage of the Vikings is one of our most popular voyages that we have. It usually sells out quite in advance every year, and there are many great opportunities and benefits for this cruise. So I know a lot of people are kind of thinking, wow, this is 35 days. But in reality, those 35 days go by so much more quickly. And, you know, especially with what's been happening in the world these past number of years, why not now is what I say. So in this presentation, we're really going to be covering the experiences, the natural landscapes, the people that you are able to meet and experience throughout this voyage. Now, this voyage is, like I said, 35 days long, but it is round trip Boston. So very easy to get flights to and from. You're able to go all the way over to Europe and then all the way back and experiencing some of the most remote destinations in the world. Now, throughout uh, this voyage, you are going to be accompanied by brilliant lecturers from all over the world, regional inspired dining menus, chefs that come on board, amazing crew, and really some very interesting fellow guests who will be, um, who will be going on with you. So uh, what we're going to first be talking about is a little bit about why it's called Voyage of the Vikings. So this Voyage of the Vikings is going to really kind of introduce you to the areas of the colonization and in a sense raids that happened by the Vikings from the eighth, uh, 800s until the 10th, uh, the late 1000s. And the Vikings were colon, they did colonize um, from the Scandinavia provinces all the way over to Newfoundland in America. So it's very interesting in one of these ports of call that we'll go through, you are actually able to uh, go see, and I do, my French is terrible, but it's Lance Aux Meadows. It's gonna be over in Newfoundland. And it has been proven that um, in around the year 1021, and that kind of coincides with the Icelandic sagas, that uh, they have found building materials dating from that time as well as Viking artifacts so um, it's very interesting they didn't stay there for long there's probably some you know some conflicts with the natives uh, but it's very interesting to see kind of how the Vikings voyage from their areas in Scandinavia um, all the way through Iceland through Greenland Newfoundland Ireland as well as Scotland uh, that we'll be going through so we're going to really again be going around the same voyage as the, as the Vikings did over a thousand years ago can't believe it's been that long <laughs> 
So we're going to focus first on the first, what we'll call the segment. So that's going to be from Boston to Rotterdam. Now, when you see um, any of these icons in the map, you see Boston and Aikireiri, they actually have little moon, half moons in it. That means it's a late call. So you're going to be there for a longer period of time. So we're going to focus on um, the U.S. ports, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Labrador, Greenland, Iceland, and Norway, ending in the Netherlands. So first off, we have Boston, a great op opportunity to get there a couple of days before, maybe walk the Freedom Trail, see some historic options. You, we even, you can even go on tour of John Adams' home at, Peace, at Peaceville, Peaceville, and then John Kennedy's home as well. If you want to see the um, uh, Salem Witch Museum over in Massachusetts, I've actually been there. It's quite interesting. Great food and wine tours. It's not called Bean Town for anything. And of course, the historic revolutionary towns of Lexington and Concord. So it's a late sale. So you could technically get there on that day. But again, it is a fantastic city to be able to explore on your own. We have my, my favorite a New England port, though, is Bar Harbor. I love this port. Uh, you can see here the tender rights that are right here. That's actually where you're going to tender in. Um, some of these ports of call are you know, more remote. They do not have large, uh, big docks or ports. So what you would be doing from the ship, you'd actually be tendering in to that from many of our tenders uh, that are sailed and manned by our very experienced crew. Uh, Bar Harbor, uh, you can experience Acadia now. National Park. You can stroll through the town. It has really walkable trails. You can see all the way through here. This is actually a walkable trail that you can take around the entirety of the cliff basin and then come back all the way through the forest and then back downtown. It's one of the things that I love to do in Bar Harbor, but there's some great uh, tours to lighthouses, bird and puffin colonies. Of course, lobster tours. Every restaurant there seems to have a lobster um, offering on their restaurant menu as well as even lobster ice cream I've had there before. So it's a, it's a brilliant town. Again, you get a really great um, time frame there, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. to really explore uh, the area around. And then we have um, a very a, a more remote uh, area of the world, which is Newfoundland. Newfoundland is a uh, home of some very interesting folk. They actually, a fun fact, uh, their accent is very, very close to a British accent. And Corner Brook is the first town that we're going to go through. It is part of the Bay of Islands, and it has a very small, uh, bustling town. It is kept, where Captain Cook initially mapped this area uh, in 1767. So it started off as a fishing village. It had some paper mills, some whale um, hunting, and things like that there. Uh, but but uh, the really great thing to see is the Grossmorn National Park. And all of these ports of call are going to have some fantastic shore excursions. Of course, if you just want to get around, walk to the, around the city, talk to some native uh, natives, it's going to be an opportunity for you to do that as well. But you're going to also have, before each port of call, an introduction to the port. Know the history of it, because what we don't want you to do is just to get off and not know what to do. So you're going to have some opportunities to really embrace uh, these ports in, these, uh, in, this, uh, in, in this part of the world. And again, Grossmore National Park is really fantastic. It's uh, had um, archives from there, from the Eskimos, the maritime archaic natives, the um, early European settlers were here, so they all survived um, in this beautiful but very, very harsh environment. And then we have up to the province of Labrador. So you're going to get to see quite a few different provinces of Canada while you are on this trip. So this is a very, again, more remote. It's a very, it's a coastal community and a national historic site in Canada. Um, the history kind of extends back to the 1500s, uh, where Basque whalers from Portugal, Portugal came. Uh, they actually have a whaling, an old whaling station here, and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site, um, where about 140 whaler, whalers and sailors were um, laid to rest, actually. You can still see the whaling cemetery uh, that is here with that. So um, some icebergs will also come into the bay during the summer that we can um, They'll be uh, cracked off from the Greenland ice sheet, and so they'll be kind of throughout this bay sometimes. So that's really cool to see. Uh, and a fun fact, as of 2021, the census, it actually had a population of about 142 um, in Red Bay. So again, it's a very unique, very remote part of Labrador province in Canada. Hmm. 
go. And then we hit Greenland. I think I've been to a few of the ports in Greenland, and it is one of the most unique characteristic places that I could never imagine living, and yet people do. So the first we have Piem, uh, pa Pamit. So this is Greenland. Remember, Greenland is a territory of Denmark, but the native people speak a Greenlandic or a Kalalisut. Uh, so that is the name of the language. So here you don't actually have any official tours, but what happens is that the actual individuals from the city will take groups of people and walk them through the town. Uh, so these individuals are um, English speakers, although maybe not fantastic, because there's no tourism infrastructure here uh, with that. And that's one of the charming facts about it um, as well. So the guides really, you know, kind of they run the gamut from, you know, an older teenager to a grandmother. So it really is a wonderful way to get a very unique aspect of the Greenland community. So you'll be guided through the town. It lasts about approximately 90 minutes. You learn about the history of the colonial harbor. They'll have a museum. Uh, they have a church that's based off of a Norwegian style. Then you can see that here was built in 1909. And it's just a wonderful option to see that perspectives of the native and you can be more aware of what you are exploring from that aspect and maybe even try some of the native uh, foods as well. And then you have a nanotalic as well, very similar to the previous um, to, the, to the previous one. Um, when we went here the last time, we actually hired one of the natives to take us around in one of their boats. Uh, when we were there. So that was a really interesting time uh, to do that. So uh, Nanotalic actually means the place with polar bears. Now I have not seen any since I've been here a couple of times and I have not seen any, but the natives say that they do see them quite often. So it's the southernmost town in Greenland. It's located on an island of the same name and it was founded in 1797 as a trading post. So it's home to about a thousand people, so much bigger than the previous, uh, than the previous town. And and um, again, it's a very, um, it's a very kind of, you know, it's a native perspective. You see uh, when we've been there the past few times, there's, there's a um, choir that is singing for us. And it's in a very unique um, singing tradition that they have there. Um, and it's a blend of musical disciplines, unlike really anything we've, I've ever heard before. So it's a really richness of traditions. You'll see them all in their seal suits and their seal, seal boots that they use. And it does have some museums. It has some old Norse and European colonial history uh, there as well. And then you have cruising Prince Christian Sound. So um, if you've ever cruised the Norwegian fjords or Glacier Bay National Park, <clears throat> this is a very um, kind of a Dolomites, if you would, kind of uh, mountain range that you are actually sailing through on these fjords. So lots of ice sheets, glaciers that are happening everywhere. So you're navigating through this the entire time. So it's named after Christian VIII um, before he became king of Denmark, uh, but explorer John Cabot's description is more accurate and more evocative. It's, he wrote a river of melted snow. That's how he actually described it when he first um, when he first uh, sailed that. So the nearest town um, is a town about of 100 residents, a native Inuit residents, and it's the only settlement that you'll see um, around this area besides a, um, a remote weather station. And, it, and it, in the winter, all of these towns actually freeze up. So they have to do all of their trading, get all of their supplies before the actually ocean freezes up around them. So again, you'll learn about all of these things uh, during your cruising as well. And then we will hit Iceland. So Isa Fjorder, Iceland, it's a very unique entrance and in sailing into this uh, city. Uh, it's uh, bordered by three really dramatic mountains. You can actually hike up those um, if you are so inclined, uh, but it really serves as an exploration hub for the surrounding West Fjords Peninsula. So it's settled around the 1500s and it's traditionally dependent on fishing, uh, but it does have um, some really amazing Amazing um, animal sanctuaries at the Arctic Fox Sanctuary, and um, it has some really great culinary traditions as well. And it even has uh, the Thingari, which is basically means Parliament or the Thing, and that was an old Viking Parliament that is um, has been rebuilt uh, from its ruins, so that you can be able to actually see how the Vikings came together uh, back in their heyday. 
And then we have Akureyri. Um, it's a beautiful town. It's called, uh, it's basically the capital of Northern Iceland. Um, and if you think that, you know, maybe you don't want to go to the to the Blue Lagoon in Reykjavik, you do have Lake Mivatan and the nature baths. It's a really unique natural baths um, out in the middle of nowhere. It's a, le a lot less crowded um, than the Blue Lagoon in Reykjavik as well. Uh, you'll have whale watching opportunities and this is Godfuss Falls, just a, such a unique and thunderous um, waterfall experience from here. And then we have Bergen, one of the most beautiful cities in Norway with such brilliant heritage. It's Norway's second largest city and the first of Norway that we'll be going to. And it's one of the most popular ports in all of the fjords and all of the Baltic. So you step off the ship and right away you're in medieval Bergen, a wharf area. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1979. And it has a really rich maritime history that goes back all the way to a thousand years ago. And it played a very important role in the Hanseatic League, which was a trading empire that really dominated maritime commerce in the region between the 14th and 18th centuries. Um, so it's one of the oldest settlements, cobblestone streets, it's a brilliant, seafood market, great cathedrals, and it also has a mountain called Mount Fluyen that has a cog lift that you can actually go into. And this right here is the Fantoff Stave Church. It was actually burned to the ground in 1994, uh, but they recreated it again the same way that the, they would have used the same materials that they would have used originally. Um, and it's a really a fantastic ode and traditional um, stave church that you can be able to, to, to be able to experience as well as Edvard Grieg. He's the composer extraordinaire of Norway and be able to see his um, villa and hear his works as well. And then we're in Rotterdam. So in Rotterdam, it's a very, it's a pretty long day, but you have such, everything's so close. You could tour Rotterdam, Amsterdam, you could go to The Hague, you could go to Delft, to, and uh, my favorite, Gouda and Cheese Farms. I absolutely love that, or how they call it, Gouda. Um, but I will always call it Gouda. And so it's Netherlands' second largest city and the Europe's busiest port. So it has some very unique modern buildings that are, because it was pretty much pummeled in World War II. We actually, um, how in America history, one of our ships was actually docked there uh, during World War II when it was bombed and it was completely obliterated uh, during the war. Uh, so um, you also have the Windmill Valley of Kinderhik, which is what you see here. I probably butchered that name, so I do apologize, but it's a great kind of midway stopping point, getting some of that Dutch heritage in and then heading back out back to Boston. So we have our second crossing focus, which is Rotterdam to Boston. Uh, one thing that we are doubling up on, you have another day in Prince Christian Sound, and you can never have enough days in, in uh, Prince Christian Sound, but you do also have a late sail in Dublin, a late sail in St. John's, a late sail in Halifax, and an overnight and late sail in Reykjavik. So the first after Rotterdam will be Ireland, and again, Vikings were big in Ireland uh, back in their day. You have a lot of Viking history all throughout the Emerald Isle. So in Cove is where we dock. You have the Titanic Museum because it was, of course, one of the ports of call um, that uh, the Titanic on her fateful voyage uh, went to. Uh, but I always like to take the train from Cove to Cork. There I head straight to the English market every time and just eat up on some wonderful Irish delicacies. So uh, Cork uh, is a, you know, they're fiercely proud people. Um, it actually is in Gaelic, it means marshy because uh, its origins was in the seventh century and it was a had a it was a merchant center both in the 18th and 19th centuries as well so you'll see that wealth really built in throughout the city of cork and again it's really easy to get to by train or by transfer a lot of people they do love to go to the blarney stone uh see a little bit of more kind of the um the countryside as well um and then they also go to waterford for those crystals so it's uh it's you have a lot of things to, that you can be able to choose from here in in cove ireland and then you head to dublin so you are there all day and night you can really plan around it's really easy to get to take the train or take the take a bus uh from the port of call all the way right into into the, into the interior of dublin 
Of course, you can take some Dublin city tours. You can hang out um, around the restaurants and the pubs. There's some great cultural experiences. You can go around to the countryside to Glendalow, see some great castles, um, go, especially you need to try to go to Trinity College and see the Book of Kells. I'm a huge library buff, so absolutely love doing that. But there's not, there's a course you'd have to be in Dublin for two to three weeks and try to do it all. And even then it's gonna be, an, it's gonna be tough to do that, but it's great to have a taste. Uh, Belfast, uh, there's some very interesting tours here. Of course, you have uh, the Troubles, which was um, uh, the, air, the time frame uh, where the Northern Ireland and Ireland fought. Um, so you have a history of uh, the Troubles in that, in that era. You have um, areas of Ulster County, another Titanic museum. This one's a very good one too. Um, and the Antrim Coast um, as well. So it's going to have um, a really great history. Uh, and again, um, lots of options for you to be able to choose from in Belfast. And I always butcher this name. It's Jupvagor, um, Iceland. Uh, again, natural wonders, just awe-inspiring mountain peaks and fjords. Um, here is where you have a lot of culinary insight tours. It's a very quiet. It's a, it's a very quiet village, fishing village. It has about 500 residents, and it sits on the east coast um, of of. Um, of Iceland, and um, it draws a lot of just visitors because it's just it's it's dramatic setting. A lot a lot of these um, options, and you have a glacier that's going to be near there as well. A lot of geothermic activities. So you have actually a lot of those new renewable energy um, hydrothermal geothermal. Um, uh, geo geothermal plants that are around and it's very fun because um, this village itself is the home to intriguing sites like Langabau and it's a log house that was built in 1790 that now has its artifacts related to Iceland's folk traditions so the fairies the trolls or how they call the hidden people um, there so it's a, it's very interesting how and in some cases how it even extends to the people's beliefs today uh, for these and it's, you do also have a very large bird population uh, for that for bird watchers here and everyone's favorite port though in Reyk is Reykjavik Iceland so all day overnight early morning all day overnight and then the next day so if you want to partake in some pub crawls or to see some nightlife in Reykjavik uh, with some Icelandic boat this is a great option to do that but of course you're going to have the golden circle which is the highlighted of the big natural landscapes and wonders for that dramatic scenery you're going to have the blue lagoon more renewable energy sites food and spirit tours I mean the options are just really really endless for Reykjavik and again you're not obligated to do any of these tours. You can do your own thing. You can be able to explore on your own, but it's great to have that context and that expertise when you're going on these tours. And again, I'm going to butcher it, but Kokurk, uh, Greenland, you will learn the phonetic spelling, I'm sure, out of when you are on these tours. So uh, here is where you have, again, it's a hot spring mecca uh, for Greenland. You have the sea tours, glacier bearings, even culinary tours. When I was here, uh, there were some very unique culinary offerings that if you have a little bit of a you know, adventurous side to eating kind of what the locals eat, which a lot of times includes what they have at hand, a lot of whale meat, seal, things like that, whatever is growing in the area, um, you can be able to partake in their hospitality uh, for that. Of course, not mandatory though, uh, but you can see also uh, traces of Norse culture because uh, there are ruins there from the 14th centuries of a church there that was built by the Norse people. And so this is, um, has the claim to fame is it has the the oldest fountain in Greenland a bit that was built in 1932 and it depicts whales that are spouting water uh, from them and it's located near their museum so again these um, Greenland ports do not have necessarily a lot of infrastructure so a lot of these tours and things like that are led by just local individual people it's very interesting to meet them and to see kind of how they live their life in this remote area of the world Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Um, and then we have St. Anthony up in New, uh, Newfoundland. Uh, this is also where you are have the opportunity to see uh, icebergs in the harbor. Uh, but a lot of people will go to that first Viking settlement um, in Lance a Meadows. So that's where they have the ruins of the first, uh, of, well, what, the only, one of the Viking settlements that they have found uh, in Newfoundland that dates back to the 1030s. But um, this was actually, this town, St. Anthony's, uh, was set up by the French in 1534. So it has a very long, uh, tie, it's tied to fishermen and whalers, but tourism draws most people in uh, to them. So um, you have a lot of moose sighting. The area has one of the largest populations of moose in Canada. You sometimes do have polar bears in the spring um, as well in the summer. So that's another opportunity to see some amazing wildlife that you might not get um, at other places in the world. So um, my favorite town though in Newfoundland is definitely the capital, which is St. John's. So it's a really quirky town, very colorful, um, and it's closer to London than it is to Canada's West Coast, which can explain some of their accents that you find there. And so it was established in the 1630s again by British fishermen this time, and it remains very, the old harbor remains just the center of the town. And it's really great to explore uh, the colors, the restaurants, and the people are just fantastic. And some really great um, libraries, some art exhibits, museums can be found here for that as well. And here is Halifax. You do have Peggy's Cove here pictured. It's a beautiful day trip out to see this gorgeous, iconic lighthouse. Really great hop on hop off bus, which New, uh, St. John's does have as well as a lot of the ports in Europe. Uh, you have a Bay of Fundy tour, food and wine. And uh, you also will have the Titanic Museum here as well as the Titanic Cemetery, uh, where a lot of the victims from the Titanic were actually buried. Um, even Jack Dawson from the movie Titanic was there. But uh, you also have, you know, a lot of, there's a huge culinary scene here in Nova Scotia and uh, a lot of UNESCO World heritage sites and there's also the town of Lunenburg um, who's what's close by that is also a world heritage site and then we're back in Boston folks so 35 days gone like that and really these long sea these long uh, voyages they do go by fast you know on it's not like an everyday you know week that you would have here you know you're not going Monday to the pharmacy or Tuesday to walk the park you're in a different place in a different uh, in a different continent sometimes every day so this is really a fantastic time but what happens when you are you know at these sea days lots of things going on for you you will not be bored I've taken some of these items and just put them here for your um, for your uh, for your perusing these are just some of the presentations that the current voyage of the Viking is on right now and again we bring on some amazing lecturers um, we even bring on physicists we bring on biologists so these are just some of the an economist some of the presentations that you would see every C day and sometimes on shorter port days in the main theater we also have crafts trivias painting we have religious offerings from uh, Judaism, Catholicism, as well as uh, Protestant. We have a bridge instructor, Tai Chi, every morning. We have a book club, wines, tasting, spirit tasting, happy hours. We have excursion presentations, port introductions, parties, gala evenings. There is something you can do as much or as little as you want, but it's going to be very, very hard uh, for you to not find something that you are really interested in. And of course, the food. The food is huge. So it's regionally inspired dining room menus. You have your specialty dining restaurants, of course, in the Pinnacle Grill. Um, you have um, Norwegian fish markets when you're in Bergen to be able to bring on all these different fish of the Norwegian area, uh, wine and cheese night, pop-ups, restaurants and Pinnacle Grill. And we also do have um, regional chefs that pop that come in uh, for Canada, Iceland as, you know, uh, Dublin and they'll actually do classes as well as have specialty nights for their menus in the Pinnacle Grill. This is the beautiful ship, the Zyderdam, and she is a, she is one of our Vista class ships, our medium class ship. She holds 1,800 passengers, which is a perfect size, not too small, not too big, as she is very navig navigable. Uh, and she is, uh, I lived on her for about a year, actually, and she is a wonderful, wonderful ship uh, to be on. 
Now, one of the great things about traveling in a group setting is that you will have um, a great option uh, or a great opportunity to have along Miss Judy uh, with you. Now, Miss Judy is a, a very experienced, well, well, uh, well, has a lot of variety of background travel with her, and she loves to go on and experience these wonderful different destinations. And she can't wait to go to do that with you. So her goal is to plan and oversee the trip of a lifetime, which this cruise definitely is. So what's included? Big, big, big thing. So again, it's a hosted sailing. So you have outstanding value. You have exclusive amenities and an experienced personable host in Judy. Now we have this amazing unheard of event going on right now. It's called Book Early and Save. So it's going on until September 30th. So if you were to book by September 30th, you're going to get all these different amenities that are right down here as a part of your exclusive, as, as a part of your exclusive um, stateroom. So whether it's an interior ocean view balcony or suite, you're going to get all of these amazing options. Now, because Travel Central is such a great partner and a great agency, um, if you book a little bit earlier than September 30th, in this case by August 25th, you're going to get an additional onboard credit. So uh, that's going to be if you were to, for example, get a veranda, a balcony, that's going to be $250 of onboard credit per person. $300 shore excursion credit per person, a signature beverage package, three nights special dining, a 35 day Wi Fi package, and all for a reduced deposit as well. So, um, your travel, uh, your travel central team and Judy can be able to help you with this. Uh, but this is a very special offer after September 30th. This offer will not be have, um, will not be had, but it also by September 30th, it includes crew gratuities as well so all the crew tips would be included in this and that can be a substantial value as well so definitely have a think about this and have a look um, because this is some value and some benefits that uh, really are unheard of for this particular cruise and at that i will leave it over to miss melissa melinda Thanks, Kristen. Wow, that was really fantastic. Um, I haven't really traveled that part of the world yet, but incredible landscapes. I mean, glaciers and geysers and fjords. How could you do it? Some great towns with Dublin and Belfast and, and Rotterdam. And of course, the history and culture of not only the, the indigenous people, but also the Vikings. And, and mm -hmm. across it's Ireland. a great mix. It really is. It really is amazing. And I just love it. So I think it's a great opportunity. You know, people say 35 days it is a long time, but you know, people, if you want to travel, this is the time to do it. And why not do it seamlessly? One flight to and from Boston without a lot of work. And so that pack once, unpack once, and, and you're ready to go. So I think it's a great offer. I think the offers for the amenity, for the gratuities is fantastic for 35 nights. I mean, it's almost silly not to put your deposit down if you think, if you're just thinking about it by September 30th. Anyway, um, just to remind the Travel Central here is here to help you. We're here to be your resource. We do keep up on the latest and greatest in the travel industry and make sure that when you go on your vacation, you get all, make sure you have all the restrictions or requirements necessary for you to have a great vacation. So we will consider, we will consider ourselves your resource for travel. And with that, I, I, I apologize, I forgot to share this with you in the beginning. If you had any questions, you could add them into the chat box. If you have a question, if you want to quickly add it to the chat box, or if you would like, we can unmute you and you can ask that question. Um, if anybody has anything they would like to share, just unmute themselves. If not, we're going to tell everybody, thank you for joining us. We'll go ahead. Um, thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, anyone here at Travel Central is happy to help you with that. Um, and we can, you know, find out if this is the right vacation for you. Thank you. Thank you. No questions. Thanks, Kristen. It was fantastic. It, it, it looks as great as I thought it was going to be. Bye-bye now. Okay. Good.